Another day of nightmares as far as trying to travel around the country. Today, more than 5,500 flights have been canceled around the world, over 2,700 of those from Southwest Airlines. Compare that to yesterday, where just over 4,900 flights were canceled, 1,600 of those from Southwest Airlines. You have just been stuck for, what, a good 18 hours now? I don't know what to do. The only flights are way too expensive, and we're stuck. Yeah, part of the problem exists at DIA. 419 flights delayed going in and out of the airport with 457 more canceled. And 9 News reporter Courtney Yoon is live at the airport. Courtney, this sounds like a real headache. A lot of frustrated people out there. Yeah, frustrated is just the start of it, Tom. If you want to know what it's been like at D Denver International Airport today, just take a look at baggage claim here. This is a massive amount of luggage. Just trying to get your bag back today took at least a couple hours. Same thing if you wanted to rebook your flight. We've seen it all today, tears, anger, frustration. But there was at least one stranded passenger who tried her best to help her fellow traveler today. Our flight just got canceled. That's this line here. By now, Southwest passengers know the check-in area at Denver International Airport pretty well. If you go around this corner, it's, yeah. it's just at the other end. Debbie Page is trying to help travelers with canceled flights figure out what to do next. I literally have nothing else to do, <laughs> so. She understands how it feels. It does feel uh, like a hot mess. Because her Southwest flight home to L.A. was canceled last night. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't actually work here. I'm just oh. trying to help people. Hundreds of Southwest flights coming out of DIA were canceled today, and customers say they aren't being given a reason why. Sure, is it because of the weather, or you don't have enough planes, or the, are they on strike? I mean, I don't know what's going on. The line to rebook a flight has been more than three hours long all day. As we were just about to check our bags, we found out it's canceled. And it's a good thing Janelle Beveridge and her family didn't have the chance to check their bags because the line to get those back will take hours too. First of mine is they were canceled four times. Wade Corey's been trying to get home to Houston for the last three days. No rental cars. We tried that for two days. We were going to drive home. After having a second Southwest flight canceled, he decided to go with another airline and hopes to be home on Wednesday. Looking at the other airlines and you don't see these lines, you don't see craziness. So there's something wrong with Southwest. For sure. There's been a lot of tears and frustration today. I've never seen so much luggage downstairs. It's crazy. But for most passengers, there's not much they can do besides wait. It snakes around. It's going to be a while. Or try to be helpful to your fellow traveler. Good luck. <laughs> Southwest Airlines said in a statement that all of the delays and cancellations are from the lingering effects of winter storm Elliott. The Transport Workers Union of America Local 556, who represents the Southwest flight attendants, said in a statement that they've demanded modernization for years with the airline. The union said that Southwest's lack of technology upgrades is to blame for all the headaches this week. Tom. Yeah, no shortage of blame. The lines are so long, the acres of luggage. It, it's a mess that uh, isn't even going to go away anytime soon. Uh, Courtney, we're going to check back with you a little bit later on for more on what's going on out at DIA. Of course, some of the initial blame fell to the weather. Greg Perez is joining us now as we take a live look outside. Uh, things have uh, become very mild in Denver after that rough week last week. Yeah, all smiles out here because I can stand outside with just my suit and I'm OK. Because remember, last week we had a high temperature on Thursday of minus six degrees over Overnight low temperatures from Thursday night into Friday of minus 20 degrees were a far cry from that. High temperatures today topped out in the middle 40s. Tomorrow, yet again, we'll be in the upper 50s and lower 60s, but we do have winter storm warnings to talk about for the mountains. Before we get into any of it, let me show you this photo real quick. A gorgeous shot over Boulder from Santiago. Thank you so much for submitting this last night. I showed this last night, but wanted to show it again just because it was just a perfect picture. Currently, temperatures in the upper 30s and lower 40s. 41 degrees in Denver, Lyman in Colorado Springs, middle to upper 30s there. 39 degrees in Greeley, middle to lower 30s in both Kremlin and Leadville. HD Doppler radar showing clear skies. Same thing goes as overnight low temperatures dropping back down into the upper 20s and lower 30s. Pretty mild night by last week's standards. Meanwhile, high temperatures for tomorrow in the upper 50s and lower 60s. So we're talking anywhere between 10 to 20 degrees above average for this time of the year. Lyman at around 62 degrees. As we head through tomorrow,
tomorrow, though, we do have to worry about those strong winds. A high wind watch in effect starting tomorrow morning, lasting through tomorrow evening at around 5 p.m. with gusts up to 80 miles per hour. Staying with those strong winds, we also have a red flag warning in effect up until 5 o'clock tomorrow. Gusts up to 40 miles per hour and extremely dry conditions are the reason why we have that red flag warning in effect. And additionally, we still have to worry about the winter storm that we're going to be getting. That starts on Tuesday and that lasts up until Thursday morning. Four to eight inches of snow for anywhere you see in the areas in light blue. That of course includes Steamboat Springs, Aspen and down near Telluride. Meanwhile, a winter storm warning in effect up to 20 inches of snow for the San Juans and the Grand Mesas. Something to keep in mind as we head through the rest of this week. Partly uh, cloudy and breezy again this evening. Much warmer tomorrow, but I talked about that mountain snow incoming. I'll time it out for you coming up. All right, Greg, thanks very much. Today, we're getting a better idea of what happened yesterday on Christmas morning when a man killed his wife and then himself at a Thornton House of Worship. Kevin Vaughn from our 9 Wants to Know team talked with a witness and to police today. He's walking us now through a sequence of events. Pretty confusing day. Tom, we should note that Jehovah's Witnesses do not celebrate Christmas, but this congregation's normal Sunday gathering was set for 9.30 a.m. A few minutes after 9 a.m., police tell us there was one person inside the Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witnesses in Thornton and two others in the parking lot, a husband and wife who were former members of the congregation. I just heard arguing, so I opened up the front door and I didn't see anybody. Tawny Ansel was across the street, wrapping a few last-minute gifts. At first, she saw nothing ominous and closed her door. And then I heard more arguing, then we heard glass break. According to Thornton police, that's when three pipe bomb-like devices were thrown through a front window. And then I heard a, like a big bang, and then a couple seconds later, I heard another big bang. Those bangs were gunfire, as police tell us the man shot and killed his wife in the parking lot, moved a short distance away, and ended his own life. Roughly 24 hours later, as a crew was replacing that broken window and a carpet cleaning truck droned, Ansel was left to contemplate what she'd heard and seen. They're really nice people, they're really humble. They're, they're super, super nice. I didn't expect nothing like this from them. A small number of people were, were arriving for that 9.30 a.m. meeting as this incident unfolded. Thornton police tell us those witnesses have been interviewed. In the meantime, the Adams County Coroner's Office has not yet made public the identities of the two people who died. It seems like officials are being tight-lipped still about exactly what they do know or, or what they think may have happened. That's true. We have been told that this couple were former members of this congregation, for example, but a person with the Jehovah's Witness I spoke to a little while ago would not say anything about how long they'd been members, when they had left, any of that kind of stuff. And it's been the same with the police and the coroner's office as well. Very little new information today. All right, Kevin, thanks. In Denver, police are looking into the death of a teenage girl. Police say her body was found around 6 a.m. at North Salida Street near Pena Boulevard and Green Valley Ranch Boulevard. Police say they are investigating. It is a homicide, but they say they don't yet know how she died. They say they don't have any suspects in custody, but if you know anything, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers.